All right, this morning I'm gonna respond to an ounce of salt per day's comments and let me say that I really appreciate these comments here. I know uh, that he disagrees with me, but he's sharing his thoughts and by sharing your thoughts, this is gonna make both of us sharper. <clears throat> this is gonna make both of us understand our viewpoint better okay so I'm gonna read what he says and then I'm gonna show the obvious mistake that our friend is making all right he says let's apply a bit of clear thinking here firstly you say that when Jesus returns it's the end of the world then you say that Jesus will reign over the house of Jacob forever. Which is it? Does the world end or does it last forever? No one is claiming that Jesus Christ only reigns for a thousand years. As I have already said, Jesus Christ reigns forever and sits at the right hand of the Heavenly Father. Nonetheless, the book of Revelation is quite clear. The destruction of the world i.e. the corrupt society, people, buildings, ports, ships, commercial activity, etc. that existed prior to the crucifixion takes place before we get to Revelation 20. Revelation 20 then discusses what happens after the destruction of the world. In particular it tells us that Satan is bound for a thousand years. It also tells us that it also tells us that those which did not take the mark of the beast live and reign with Christ a thousand years. There is no mention that this is the end of Jesus Christ's reign. Revelation 20 verse 7 then states that after the thousand years the rest of the dead shall be brought back to life. This is the first resurrection. At some moment Satan is loose for a little season to deceive the nations once more. None of what I t have typed it here is inconsistent with the Bible. In my view, our current predicament is best explained by the idea that we are either the dead brought back to life or we are the, their children, grandchildren, etc. The mechanism of the first resurrection is not entirely clear. Jesus Christ is still our king, but Satan is loose and deceiving the nations once more. And shall, go, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them all. This is where I think we are now, the gathering together for the battle. And then we've got... Three more. Just hold on. Moreover, there is no suggestion that there will be unsaved people during the thousand years. However, after the thousand years has passed, it is quite possible that those that take part in the first resurrection will continue to be, be deceived by Satan. Who is the one calling Jesus Christ a liar? In one case, you are saying the world ends. And on the other side of your mouth, you are saying that he rules over the house of Jacob forever. Are you being honest about it? And conflating someone who thinks the Bible is true with someone who believes in evolution makes no sense either. Such a man would not even be discussing this topic with you. And what is all the KFC taught? Are you unable to hold a logical discussion without being offensive to people that don't share your confusing eschatology? Pull your head and focus on the topic and not on insulting those that are raising topics that are crucial to our salvation. <clears throat> All right, so thank you for that. I really do appreciate it because... Uh, I want to go over, I want to know what you're thinking, and I want to help clear this situation up, to clear this matter up. 
and I believe um, you're doing a real good job even though we obviously disagree you're doing a good job of discussing this which is more than uh, what most people can say in Ecclesiastes 12 verse 13 let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man all right so um, let's go here and uh, I want to first address something here right, then states after the thousand year the rest of the dead shall be brought back to life all right, there's no mention that this is the end of okay first of all I gotta go let me go back up here I apologize so uh, you're saying you're saying uh, in one case I'm saying that the world ends and then on the other side of my mouth I'm saying that Jesus rules over the house of Jacob forever all right so, um, you know, I like to go to Matthew 13 and the parable of the wheat and the tares. And Jesus calls the harvest the end of the world. All right. We can go to Matthew 24. And Jesus is asked specifically, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of of the world now obviously you're making a huge mistake by thinking Jesus Christ stops reigning when it is the end of the world that's not even suggested anywhere in one case I'm saying the world ends that's true and then on the other side of my mouth, you're saying that he rules over the house of Jacob forever. So this is not a contradiction, okay? This world is coming to an end. At no point will Jesus ever stop reigning. Luke chapter 1 verse 33 and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end alright so he's his he's never gonna stop reigning he's never gonna stop being the Lord of Lords that's he's God Almighty he is from everlasting to everlasting and you think about I guess you know like John 3 yeah, just I mean, everywhere in the Bible, it's consistent that whosoever lives and believes in the Lord Jesus Christ shall never die. Right? Though that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. A life that lasts forever. So, just because this world comes to an end, doesn't mean life comes to an end. And one example uh, we've already been shown is in Genesis 6, when God saw the wickedness of man, that it was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually, and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart and the Lord said I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowls in the air for it repents me that I have made them but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord All right, so God destroyed the old world All right, and the old world was much much different I think I I could be wrong. I, I think I gave a couple examples the other day. Uh, one example is there was no rain 
Uh, instead of rain, there was a mist that came up from the earth and it watered the whole face of the ground. All right. And then on the day it, the floods began is when it rained. All right, so it was much different back then. Men were living over 900 years. Right, it's just a massively different world back then. All right, and so we're living in a different world today. Now, there is a world that is coming that is severely different than the one we're in now. This world that we're currently in is coming to an end. Make no mistake about it. But just because this world comes to an end doesn't mean Jesus Christ comes to an end. Jesus reigns forever, okay? So he's from everlasting and to everlasting. Uh, that'll never change. All right. So I, I want to go over this idea. Um, I think it's somewhere here you, you talk about um, the rest of the dead shall be brought back to life. In my view, our current predicament is best explained by the idea that we are either the dead brought back to life Or we are their children, grandchildren, etc. The mechanism of the first resurrection is not entirely clear. Alright, let me try to clear this up. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life let me see if I can find a verse where it says that All right. let's see I I don't remember is it this one or is it gee I can't remember nothing hold on a sec no way off way way off I don't know where this is at nope way off. Okay, I'll have to... I wish I could remember stuff. I can't spell. I can't remember. Let's go somewhere in the Bible. I better leave it right here, hadn't I? <laughs> wow, I went one too far and one front. Okay. Gotta meet in the middle. John 11. Martha says unto Jesus, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? And she said unto him, Yeah, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. All right, so Jesus clearly is the resurrection. He is the first resurrection. He is the first fruits of them that slept. Alright. 1 Corinthians 15 But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Nobody else resurrected from the dead and became the first fruits of them that slept. Nobody else but Jesus. He's the only one that has resurrected from the dead. All right, which means he changed from 
he went from uh, our he was in our corruptible body he was in our bodies just like the bodies that we are in now and he resurrected from the dead and ascended to heaven he is the first fruits he is the first one and we are followers of him we are going to do as he done he has led the way for us all right and you know the first uh, first Corinthians 15 is a great uh, passage or great chapter for this it explains it very clearly in a moment in the twinkling of night the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed the last trump is the end of the world make no mistake about it and so at the end of the world this is when we're changed from corruptible to incorruptible from mortal to immortal alright so this happens at the last trump which is the end of the world we will be changed those of us that are born of God alright and so <laughs> When this happens, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? All right, so there is no second resurrection of people. There is one resurrection of the people at the end of the world All right, now let's go back let's go back here oh hold on a second what was that verse that I was looking at here it is alright let's see if I have done this uh, uh, okay so John 5 verse 29 and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation all right so we can go to daniel 2 and see that this is consistent all throughout or i'm sorry daniel 12 this is consistent all throughout the bible and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt this is talking about the same thing it shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation all right the only ones that have done good are those who are born of the Spirit of God we're not good but because we are born of the spirit Jesus is pure and therefore he makes us good because he abides in us and therefore we are seen as good without him we can do nothing all right all right so I mean that that should that really should make it very simple Jesus is the resurrection he is the first fruits of them that slept he is the first one that died resurrected and ascended to heaven and he has promised to come back for us and when he comes back we will be lifted up in the air and we at that moment we are changed in the twinkling of an eye Right, just like what we read in 1 Thessalonians 4. At the last trump, at the end of the world. Oops. Let's do this. Alright. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout of the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. This is at the end of the world. 
at the last trump, the trump of God. This is the end of this world. Again, there's no, you forget about this idea that Jesus stops reigning. All right, you, you only get this idea that Jesus stops reigning from people who say Jesus reigns for a thousand years. He does not reign for a thousand years. I showed you in Luke chapter 1 verse 33 that he reigns forever. All right, so you have to get rid of this idea that Jesus reigns for a thousand years. He doesn't. He's reigning right now, and he reigns forever. That's never, there's no end to it. And he is from the beginning, he is to the end, he is from everlasting, and he is to everlasting. Right? I mean, what is that? Uh, Revelation 1? Should, you know, make this very clear. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, he is the first resurrection. The first begotten of the dead means he is the first resurrection. Alright? I mean, that's clear as day. Is it not? Jesus says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Jesus Christ is God Almighty. So let's go to Revelation 20, the first resurrection. You'll see here, in verse 5, the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years are finished. This is the first resurrection. <clears throat> Alright, so. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. Alright, so. It's very simple. Jesus is the first resurrection right now we are partakers of his resurrection and at the end of the thousand years when he comes in the clouds of heaven then we are lifted up with him all right that is when we are changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye Alright, then, here we go. Let's do it this way. This is the moment at the end of the thousand years when we are lifted up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Right, remember what it says here in verse 7. Behold, he comes with clouds and every eye shall see him. He's coming in the clouds of heaven. All right, and the, remember in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, when Jesus is asked, what is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Remember that? And then he says, the sun shall be dark and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken and then shall appear Jesus in the clouds of heaven and the angels will gather together the elect. Remember what I showed you in Matthew 13? The harvest is the end of the world and the angels are the reapers. Oh. Where are we at here? Right there. <laughs> the enemy that sowed them is the devil. The enemy is the one that sows the tares. The enemies of God are the ones that sow the unsaved. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. Remember what we just read? The angels will gather together the elect. Remember what it says, we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. 
right and so also we are lifted up in the air to meet the Lord in the clouds all right remember that and then of course Revelation 1 behold he comes with clouds again Matthew 24 the angels shall gather together his elect all right so consistent all throughout the Bible all right and so we'll go to Revelation 20 the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years are finished this is the first and first this is the first resurrection blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection we that are born of the Spirit of God are partakers of his resurrection all right right now the second death has no power over us we will live forever all right right now we are priests of God and of Christ right now and we reign with him right now he has made us kings and priests unto God right now we reign with him we're kings we're royalty we are priests unto God we are called to preach the gospel to every creature right now All right, so I hope that clears it up. You know, because here in verse 11, for example, this is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Right? You notice here the great white throne. Well, who is that? That's obviously Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven and him that sat on it. From whose face the earth and heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. Remember what we read here in Matthew 24? Um, the sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaking. Shall be shaken, excuse me. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat up on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. So clearly. The sun being darkened, the moon shall not give her light, the stars shall fall from heaven, the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. This is what happens when he comes at the end of the world, which is at the end of the thousand years. I mean, isn't it amazing? Well, what do you think? There's going to be two ends of the world? This is clearly the end of the world. Whose face the earth and heaven fled away. The sun is darkened, the moon shall not give her light, the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven be shaken this is the same thing it's not a dip it's not two different events it's the same event that happens at the end of the thousand years which is the end of the world and here we have judgment all right so the judgment is given to those that are not saved and those of us that are saved judgment has already been given to us and that judgment is everlasting life whosoever lives and believeth in me shall never die it's already determined God cannot change that that cannot he can't take back we can't be unborn of God all right and I saw thrones remember what we read in Revelation 1 he made us kings and I saw thrones kings sit on thrones we are kings we sit on a throne and judgment of everlasting life has already been given to us right now now during this time people are being beheaded all right and right now there are people who do worship the beast now, those are the people that are not saved all right so you got people that are saved and you got people that are not saved during this time 
all right and people that are saved those of us that are saved we live and reign with Christ right now blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power they shall be priests of God in Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years this is a very unique time period unlike the time period before baby Jesus came along and unlike the time period after Jesus returns very unique time period alright so I hope that you know, can go on quite a while about that and then you know in verse 8 um, you, if you want to understand verse 8 a little more and he shall go out to see the nation of which are in the four quarters of the earth Gog and Magog to gather them to gather to battle Uh, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Um, here, I think it's Ezekiel 38 that talks about this very same thing. If I'm remembering right, and, and the prophecy given here is about the end of the world. All right, so you connect the dots there. I don't want to waste I'd recommend reading it given you know to clear up any doubt you might have All right so prophecy of the end of the world all right is it's gonna happen all right and so this is just simply a reference to what we're reading about the judgment of God that happens at the end of the world all right and okay how do I address this this is where I think we are now the gathering together for the battle okay so I want you to think about that the gathering together of the battle all right so when Satan is loosed, he gathers together his people. Alright, so who is gathered at the end of the world? The wheat is gathered into the God's barn. The tares are gathered into bundles. So, in Revelation 20 when Satan is loosed he gathers together his people to battle gathers them together to battle we can't be in that moment right now because the only people on earth are the unsaved people okay so if you are claiming to be one of those that are being gathered by Satan that puts you on the wrong side of the fence all right you don't want to be on that side of the fence all right so they are gathered together to compass the camp of the saints about in the beloved city now that beloved city is heavenly Jerusalem which is above so I look if you're imagining uh, Jerusalem on earth being that beloved city you're dead wrong and it's going to screw you up big time right in Galatians chapter 4 Jerusalem which is above is free which is the mother of us all encompass the camp of the saints about the beloved city the beloved city is Jerusalem which is above not the, not the dirty one on earth the 
Jerusalem which is above is free and the mother of us all okay so Satan when he, he gathers together his people you're not one of his people his people are unsaved they're not saved they're not born of the Spirit of God we that are saved at the end of the world will be lifted up first the dead in Christ then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air all right so we're up in the air we are the camp of the Saints the beloved city which is above this moment in time when Satan is loosed he gathers together the unsaved while the saved people are up in the air and while we're up in the air to meet the Lord in the air right to meet the Lord in the air we are up in the air fire comes down fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them so you see you can't be one of those that are being gathered by Satan if you're saved you're up in the air with the camp of the Saints the beloved city which is Jerusalem which is above alright so at that moment fire comes down and devours them all when they are devoured Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? So, death is destroyed forever. Alright? This is consistent all throughout the Bible. Alright, what's not in the Bible anywhere is the idea of Jesus reigning a thousand years. It's not in Revelation 20 it's not anywhere at all Revelation 20 isn't talking about Jesus reigning a thousand years it's talking about us reigning with him during this time period it's clear they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years and shall reign with him a thousand years Jesus reigns forever there is no conflict here at all all this is talking about is a unique time period and this is a unique time period it's unlike the time before baby Jesus came and certainly unlike the time after Jesus returns alright so right now when we are born of the Spirit of God we reign with Christ alright we shall never die we are partakers of his resurrection blessed and holy is he, is he that has part in his resurrection and from Jesus Christ who is a faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead he is the first fruits of them that slept right he is the first resurrection all right, there's not going to be his, Jesus' resurrection, he resurrected, and then a, a, another resurrection followed by another resurrection. There's only one resurrection remaining for the saved. And when we are resurrected into our glorified bodies, the only resurrection of the unsaved is to be killed off forever the second death and that's what we read about here all right we got nothing to worry about in regards to that on blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power so right now we are born of the Spirit of God that can never ever change once saved always saved all right so um, go on and on and on about that too but 
Um, my Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. So the second death has no power over us right now. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? We have everlasting life right now. We are kings and priests unto God right now. The judgment has already been given to us. We are saved, sealed, secured, sanctified forever. Nothing can change that. All right. So we can't be in that moment right now because this is at the after the thousand years. So you understand Revelation 20, right? So there's this time period, and then at the end of the time period is when Satan is loosed. All right, when Satan is loosed, that is when we are up in the air with the Lord. Right? That is when we are changed in a moment of, of time. We're up in the air when this happens. Alright, so that way it can't be this is the end of the world, so it can't be um, there's, there can't be anything else. <laughs> uh, there's no way around it. There's no way around it. Okay, let's go here. Moreover, there is no suggestion that there will be unsaved people during the thousand years. Right. <laughs> no suggestion that there will be unsaved people during the thousand years. Um, well, let's see. People getting their heads cut off. Saved people. You think saved people are going to be cutting off saved people's heads? You know, people are going to be worshiping the beast. What you think a saved people are going to be doing that? Um, and, and then Satan, <laughs> at the end of the thousand years, Satan is loose to gather. You think he's going to go out and deceive saved people? And he's going to gather together saved people to battle against God? And then God's going to send fire down onto saved people? Yeah, what the hell are you teaching, man? It makes no sense at all. Alright, so that's that's wrong. You're teaching that at the end of the thousand years Satan is going to be loosed. Now, according to your theory, there's no... Let me read that again. Maybe I misread it. Moreover, there is no suggestion that there will be unsaved people during the thousand years. No suggestion at all. So you are going to say that Satan, at the end of the thousand years, Satan is going to be loosed, and he's going to go out and deceive the nations of saved people. And the saved people are going to get, <laughs> are going to compass the camp of the saved people, and fire is going to, is going to come down and destroy all the saved people. What the hell are you talking about, man? Look, you're desperately trying to hold on to a doctrine that is dead. It does not square with the Bible at all. You can't, this is an impossible situation. Impossible. Now, the reason why Satan is loosed at the end of the thousand years and deceives the nation it's you know the reason for it is to gather together the unsaved and to gather them at our feet when we're up in the air and this goes back to Genesis 3 verse 15 I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel that's the whole 
It's a fulfillment of the prophecy that's all throughout the Bible. Till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Right. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. And to know that I have loved thee. This prophecy is all throughout the Bible. We're up in the air. Our enemies gathered at our feet. Jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying evil forever. All right. So this is a prophecy that is fulfilled all throughout the Bible. Now, before Jesus came along, there was one nation, one country of people, one nation of Israel. Okay? And outside of the nation of Israel did Satan deceive the nations. All right. Uh, let's do it. If, can we do it this way? Let's do it this way. Can we do it this way? Will this work? Alright, so... Here, let's look at this map right here. I'm going to open this image. Oh, that's not, that's not very big, but... If you can see blue, you, see, you can see enough. All right, so imagine this. Old Testament, this is the nation of God. All right. Outside of this nation here, outside of the blue, are the nations deceived. All right, Satan deceives those nations because they are not the nation of God. All right. So here comes Jesus, and Jesus, he makes a, a very nice statement here. Nation of, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Oh, there in Matthew 21, verse 43, therefore I say unto you, the nation of the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Alright, so when Jesus comes along, he essentially dissolves this border. Alright, and now he makes the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes in him. Alright, so the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Oops. I think I got the wrong. I got, the, oh wow, I got way off on this. How did I do that? Alright, so in 1 Peter chapter 2, we are, we Christians are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. You know, think about this, a chosen generation. Right there, that's consistent with a thousand years. All right, we are a royal priesthood. That's consistent with thrones and they that sat upon them. Judgment was given to them. All right, and a holy nation, a peculiar people. All right, and which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. Which in time past were not a people, but now are the people of God. Why? Because this barrier has been taken down. Now, you know, back then when Satan had the ability to deceive all these nations outside of the nation of Israel. Alright, Jesus comes along and he takes that down. And makes the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes in him. Now, Fast forward into the future when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Behold, he comes with clouds. Alright, so when he comes with clouds. Alright, so that's at the end of the world. When he comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world. And we are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air. Alright, so we're up in the air. So imagine this blue has returned once now there's a a border a barrier around us we are the camp of the saints we are up in the air all right just like what we read in Genesis 3 verse 
15 it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel we are up in the air behold I will make them to come and worship before thy feet right we're up in the air till I make thine enemies thy footstool we are up in the air now Satan once again is able to deceive the nations because the only people left on earth are the unsaved people you get it now it's easy crystal clear so when we're up in the air Satan gathers together the unsaved people they gather them at our feet to compass the camp of the saints about the beloved city which is Jerusalem which is above and fire comes down from God out of heaven Jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent destroying evil forever death is swallowed up in victory it's the end of this world this world of death this world of sin it's the end it's not the end of life but it's the end of this world all right and so I would encourage y'all just to read and believe the Bible that you hold in your hands I don't know what's so confusing about this all right and uh, there's you know so many people that make this confusing it's it's really incredible all right they they like to make these charts which is a lot of fun this is illogical all right what do you say about my confusing eschatology look at this you got the church rapture and then you got another what what what's going on here the church is raptured and then a thousand years and then at the end of the thousand years the unsaved the unsaved are resurrected this none of this makes sense the resurrection of the believers then a thousand years and the resurrection of the unbelievers that's not suggested anywhere and I'm confusing I mean, what I'm teaching is confusing huh he's got this a millennialism here which looks to be the simplest chart and I you know I don't subscribe to any of these you know labels I just believe what the Bible says that's it now this is interesting notice here at church age alright hey, now I'm telling you that's uh, I don't understand why you put church age there Uh, now I'll, I'll get into that all right so the second coming the last judgment resurrection of believers resurrection of the unbelievers new heaven new earth okay so this is you know essentially right all right so um, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it is the end of the world we are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air and our enemy is gathered at our feet and destroyed and then we'll be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory and now I want to show you another look at this I mean I don't I'm not gonna say these people are idiots because they're unable to realize the church age and the millennium is the same doggone thing I'm not gonna say they're stupid all right I'm just gonna say um, they should be able to connect the dots it's the same thing it's the same thing so why are you now what is this church age then the millennium it's the same doggone thing because like I shared here 
the church age is when the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes. It's the same doggone thing. And maybe that's what they're trying to say. But why don't you put that on top of that instead of this idea, well, there's the church age and then there's a millennium. I mean, you essentially got the same thing here that you got here. But you just, all you did here is divide the church age and the millennium. It's the same thing. Why not have three sections? Well, first there's the church age. And then there's the millennium. And then after that comes the thousand years. Well, how about that? So you got 15 different resurrections and you got a 42 different ends of the worlds. And nobody knows what the hell anything is. All right, so my eschatology is confusing. My eschatology is Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and it is the end of the world. All the unsaved are destroyed forever and those of us that are saved are transformed into our glorified bodies. And that's it. There's a new heaven and a new earth where there's no more sin, no more death, no more sorrow, no more pain. It's not, I mean, that's simple. This stuff here, well, you got the church age and then you got the millennium and then you got cheeseburgers and then you got another thousand years. Now, what do you got here? Classical premillennialism? Look, I'm telling you, this here is what people preach. This is what they teach. And the reason they teach it is because they saw a Hollywood movie called Left Behind. And they want to believe that Jesus, when people are raptured, <laughs> that unbelievers have a second chance. All right, so you, you're almost uh, progressed from that, uh, an ounce of salt per day. You've progressed and you're uh, thinking by saying that they're during this after you know after Jesus comes somewhere you said there's nothing that indicates nothing no suggestion that there'll be unsaved people during the thousand years alright so in your mind when you say that you think there's not going to be unsaved people after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and that's true alright so now you just have to recognize that the thousand years happens before um, the judgment of God, the destruction of all evil, all death. All right, because when the resurrection occurs, there is no more unsaved people. All right, no more unsaved people after the second coming. So this here, this this classical premillennialism fits this idea of uh, the movie left behind but I'm telling you don't get your doctrine from Hollywood movies just read and believe the Bible that you hold in your hands all right so I think I'm this is it for today I appreciate uh, you sharing your thoughts and this gives me an opportunity to talk about it and uh, and I always enjoy that I always enjoy uh, these comments and uh, please continue let's continue this discussion it's very interesting